On the campus of Texas A&M University, at the southern apex of Aggie Park, sits the Clayton W. Williams Jr. Alumni Center. This is campus home to nearly three quarters of a million former students. Inside these walls, you'll find all things Aggie. Deeply rooted traditions like Aggie Muster, reunion gatherings, the Century Club, and dozens of other programs and events that tie former students back to their beloved alma mater. And here also, you'll find another office, unlike any other on campus. Day in and day out, a steady stream of students enters this building to mark one of the greatest milestones of an Aggie academic career, the ordering of the Aggie ring. The Association of Former Students is the steward of and houses the office of the Aggie Ring Program. Earning an Aggie Ring means strict requirements must be met, and there are no exceptions. These seniors will receive their Aggie Rings at an upcoming Ring Day. Until then, they wait. When it arrives, this ring will be unique. Never before has there been one like it, and there will never be another because this room is yours. The Aggie ring is one of the most unique phenomenons I've ever seen in my life. Putting on that, that ring for the first time and seeing that, it's, it's, it's kind of magic. It's, it's unbelievable the power that, that, that comes with that and the pride that comes with putting that, that, that ring on. For centuries, the ring has been a symbol of strength and individuality. In 3500 BC, the Egyptians were the first to use the ring as a signet or signature, as unique as a fingerprint, custom made to represent the wearer. Class rings likely found their beginnings in 1835 at the United States Military Academy at West Point. At Texas A&M, the tradition began with the class of 1889, only 12 class years after A&M opened. The early Aggie ring examples bore little resemblance to the iconic rings of today, but did feature a few similarities. Gold, emblazoned with AMC and engraved with the wearer's name, early ring designs were driven by individual cadet classes and would change significantly from year to year. By 1894, students wanted more symbolism in their rings. The result included such familiar imagery as the American Eagle, the class year, the seal of Texas on one side, and the crossed rifle and saber on the other. The resulting rings cost $10 and were created by a local jeweler. Designers wanted to be sure the rings wouldn't interfere with the white gloves worn with the Aggie cadet dress uniform, and that the ring would be useful as a signet seal. By the 1930s, the cost of the ring had risen to 1650 Classes still had neither standardized the design nor the manufacturing process, and anyone could purchase a ring from a number of jewelers. Until 1932, all cadets were required to live on campus and dine at the mess hall. But enrollment had begun to dwindle as the Great Depression took hold, and many students were now allowed to live off campus. Against the backdrop of those difficult times, Texas A&M students developed a deep loyalty to one another and the school. The old moniker of farmers gave way to the new modern designation of Aggies, and they became fiercely protective of that Aggie heritage. 
in the early 1930s, a group petitioned President T.O. Walton to do something to protect the integrity of the Aggie ring, um, to ensure that the people who got one were people who actually met the requirements, that the manufacturing of the ring was consistent from year to year. All of those things that they asked President Walton to do, that's our legacy. That's what we do today. As a junior, I was chairman of the ring committee. The committee was appointed uh, to make some recommendations for how the ring would be handled. Some of the recommendations that a person had to be a qualified senior. I think the students were happy that they had some restriction on it. Of course, that was protecting the students. That was the, I think, the real beginning of the uh, way of handling the, the ring. Following the recommendations of the ring committee, strict qualification rules were implemented and the single contract was awarded for manufacture. And for the design, there would be only one Aggie ring. A&M taught me how to be a person, an adult, and, and have values. Um, it taught me how to look to others. It means friendship, it means fellowship. The ring symbolizes the, the pride that I feel. It's the outward expression of what I feel in here. Everyone here is a longtime employee. There's a great deal of pride in doing a good job, doing the best job you can. We're well aware of how every single ring in this factory is associated with an individual person. Since the 1933 Ring Committee, only three companies have ever manufactured the Aggie Ring. In 1948, that responsibility was finally taken up by Balfour, who's been the exclusive Aggie ring manufacturer ever since. Founded in 1913, the LG Balfour Company is one of the oldest and largest commemorative jewelry makers in the world. The process to create the Aggie ring is an old one, requiring skill and meticulous attention to detail, for much of the work is done by hand. It all starts with that unique order at the ring office, and Balfour takes it from there. The association sends us a weekly computer report. The orders will move into the factory, and it's ready to begin work. That's the first step, is a wax pattern will be injected. At, it's a replica of the ring, and it will have everything on the ring, year date, all the detail design. It will be the correct finger size. At that point, that wax pattern will be then prepared to go into a casting process. Using a hand-carved set of master tools that haven't changed in decades, molds are created and replaced regularly. The tools change only if the ring design changes, and that hasn't happened since 1963, when the name of the school changed from the Agricultural and Mechanical College of Texas to Texas A&M University. One thing that has changed is the scale of production. Balfour now creates nearly 15,000 rings for Texas A&M each year, more than double the production of the next closest ring program. No one has the tradition or the size and scale of a ring program that A&M does. A&M is the largest account, not only for us, but really in the industry. What you did on campus over a lifetime, that's really a very small portion of your lifetime, but it really kind of sets the path for where you're going to go longer term. And getting that Aggie ring and, and being part of that Aggie family is a uh, it's, it's just a feeling. The design of the Aggie ring changed in only relatively minor ways between 1933 and 1935, and except for the name of the school, hasn't changed since. Every element of the Aggie ring design holds significance of the history, tradition, and priorities of Texas A&M. The ring crest displays an Aggie's class year, a shield representing the desire to protect the reputation of Texas A&M 
engraved with 13 stripes, symbolizing the 13 original United States. The name of the school along with its founding year encircled the crest. And an eagle demonstrates agility, strength, and the ability to reach great heights. One shank of the ring includes crossed saber and rifle over a cannon, signifying valor and confidence, as well as Texans' determination to defend their homeland. Texas and United States flags remind Aggies of their dual allegiance, born of the land-grant heritage of Texas A&M. The opposite shank features a central star, the seal of the state of Texas, surrounded by both oak and olive branches, oak symbolizing the strength to fight and olive indicating the desire for peace. A ribbon joins the two, symbolizing the necessity of blending these traits in order to serve. You're wearing something that's inherited the legacy and the, the traditions of, of Texas A&M. We want to preserve that and we want to pass it along to the next generations and that they understand that connection of what it means to be a fighting Texas Aggie. It's the people that went before me, the people who have gone through it and fought for that education, blood, sweat, and tears, the people that paved the way. It's a symbol of hard work. It's a symbol of the core values of the university. It says to me that I accomplished what I set out to accomplish. I set out to get a degree from Texas A&M University, and I was able to accomplish that. And it was more than just getting a degree. It was an experience of a lifetime. We have a spirit that is, is rooted and pride. A big part of our pride and probably many, many, many traditions came from our humble beginnings. And a lot of that's reflected in the design of this ring. The Aggie Ring's a great reminder of who we are. My first knowledge of Texas A&M was my father's Aggie Ring. And he wore his ring every single day. And his ring looks like a lot of rings that have had that much of a life well lived, and that is it is worn smooth, and maybe only Aggies can recognize that, that this is a, an Aggie ring. The vast majority of Aggie rings are gold. Prior to the 1950s, Aggie rings were often created from three separate pieces, left, right, and crest. And until 1998, they were two pieces, the crest being soldered on. But increased order volume demanded a more efficient process, and today, all rings are molded as one solid piece of metal. But every one starts out as wax. It's a process that's been around for hundreds of years. It's called a lost wax investment casting process. We take the wax pattern, we make a mold around that wax pattern with an investment, which is a slurry of powder and water mixed together similar to a plaster of Paris. And we make a mold of that ring. We then place that mold into a furnace and that, that mold stays in that furnace overnight through about a 10 to 12 hour cycle time. And what's happening during that cycle, we call that a burnout cycle, it is hardening the investment material from a, a liquid slurry type mix into a very hard, almost concrete-like material. And then it also burns out the wax pattern. So you now have a mold with a negative void inside it of whatever the object was, in this case, an A&M ring. Well, the next day we'll then take that plaster mold and we will melt gold and then we will pour that into that mold. Once that's cooled, we will then uh, break that mold up and remove the cast ring from it and then clean that ring up and then we will begin its polishing process.
you're actually creating something and, and you know especially uh, in these days it's, there's very little we actually create uh, from from nothing to to something All three of our kids went to A&M and I was very involved in the Houston A&M Mothers Club and eventually after everybody had graduated and so they're on their way so I figure I'm 62 years old and I'm going to go get my Aggie ring and it was a, like a dream come true. I'd always wanted to be a real bona fide Aggie. going to be 81 years old, 60 years after my classmates and I qualified for my Aggie ring. So I put it on my finger and I never take it off now. There is only one Aggie ring. Students at Texas A&M Cutter, Texas A&M Galveston, and the flagship campus all wear the same unique symbol of accomplishment. We are very serious about our role as protectors of the ring tradition. We ensure that if somebody has an Aggie ring, it's because they met the academic requirements. For most undergraduates that means 90 hours completed, at least 45 of those hours here at, at Texas A&M. Rings are available to graduate students as well once specific requirements are met. The ring is the most visible symbol of the worldwide Aggie network. More than 90 percent of A&M students who are eligible order their Aggie rings and Aggies wear their rings for life but one ring at the Clayton W. Williams Jr. Alumni Center towers over all the rest. Created from 176 individual pieces, joined and polished, this Aggie ring has become one of the most iconic locations on campus. It's the centerpiece of the Haynes Ring Plaza. Dedicated in 2009, the plaza was designed as a gathering place for Aggies of every generation. This ring creation is modeled after the one belonging to former Chevron CEO Bill Haynes, class of 1946. I'm now convinced that the association is basically an icon on this campus. I think they do a fantastic job in keeping former students informed as to what's going on in this great place. And also I'm convinced that they do play a very meaningful role in the educational process itself. The ring crest of this one-of-a-kind destination includes a time capsule that will be opened in 2046, the centennial anniversary of Haynes's class. What we have in the Haynes Ring Plaza is actually not a sculpture. It's an enlargement, is what it is, of the actual Aggie ring. And it was decided that it had to be tall enough for the tallest basketball player with a top hat to stand in the middle or the smallest Aggie band member holding a tuba. It came out to be 11 and a half feet. Well, right then and there, I decided we've got to have a 12-foot ring. So the ring in the Haynes Plaza is 137 times the size of my Aggie ring. It's the Aggie family. I love seeing that. I love that people are out there in the building, around the ring, and on the plaza. And I, I just get goosebumps. The fact that all Aggies wear the same ring joins them together. The strength of that unity follows Aggies throughout their lives, both in triumph and sorrow, during moments of great joy and times of terrible heartbreak. In 1999, the bonfire collapse left Aggies reeling in shock and grief as 12 Aggies lost their lives. While that tragedy unfolded, more than 30 Aggies left their rings at the flagpole near the site. For Aggies, it's among the most treasured things that we have. And to take that off and leave it at the base of a flagpole as a tribute to someone you probably never met, uh, what would motivate somebody to do that? And, and in my mind, I get it because the most that we can give is the least that we can do in that moment. The most compelling story was a man's ring. And he had left it there the morning after the tragedy. And he had scratched his name out of the ring. And he said, these are for all the Aggies that'll never get their ring.
Once rings are cleaned and sandblasted, they move through a series of finishing stations. Each station completes a separate task. It takes the better part of a day to take a ring through the finishing process. It starts off in a grinding where you remove uh, the larger amounts of metal and then you go through a series of mm, approximately 22, 23 different steps of various grades of polishing. As the ring moves through the stations, the order form goes with it. Your ring is unique and no two are alike. Many ring details, like the pebbling, are done by hand. Parts of the process are really the same that they've been for years and years. And with that, your ring is complete. In the end, more than 50 sets of hands have worked together to complete each individual unique Aggie ring. Rings are then placed in commemorative boxes and prepared for shipping. The next time this box is opened will be when you see your Aggie ring for the first time. We understand the wow factor, and so we want to make sure when that person opens that ring box they get that wow factor. My dad, he had an Aggie ring, very worn down Aggie ring, class 43. He had liberated uh, two concentration camps uh, as a as a soldier, and uh, you know that that ring was with him there. And uh, yeah, that that ring, if that ring could talk. Every Aggie ring has a story, and it's a story of of a unique Aggie, and and how they feel about A and M and ultimately why they wear their ring. I think it says so much about us wanting to, uh, to be connected through a unique symbol, a tangible symbol, and yet we're, we're individualized by our class here and our experience. Throughout the years, the Texas Aggie Magazine has been filled with unique, sometimes incredible, and often heartwarming stories told through Aggie rings. Unexpectedly receiving a ring, first generation Aggie ring, often rings lost and then reunited with their owners. Stories of rings returned to family after an Aggie has passed on are especially poignant. Legendary rings worn in battle. Sometimes the ring finds its way home even when its Aggie does not. Aggies tend to be on the frontiers of human endeavor and Aggie rings tend to accompany them. When I started down this trail I didn't know where my ring was going to take me. I was a flight director in mission control for all of the Apollo missions, all of the missions to the moon. The commander of Apollo 12 was a fellow named Pete Conrad. But I went to Pete and said, would you carry my Aggie ring to, to the moon with you? On Apollo 13, which is the one that we had so much trouble with, they got a picture of me standing with the other flight directors when they stepped out on the carrier deck. And I put my thumb up in the air, and there was the Aggie ring that had been taken on the flight before. Be open and prepare yourself, and then be open for wherever your ring takes you. I think we'll see Aggie rings go to Mars, and maybe as long as the university is still here, beyond that. But I suspect you'll see one on Mars somewhere. Wherever man goes uh, that requires ingenuity and skill, you'll see an Aggie ring. I promise you, if there's a place to go, an Aggie and an Aggie ring will be there. There is absolutely uh, there are no bounds, in my opinion, for Texas Aggies or the Aggie ring. We didn't have the the, the, the great presentations that, as we do with parents and with friends, and they do it so great today. Mine came in the mail. My, I was at work and my mother called and said, hey, you got a package, it's fairly small, and I went, you think it's the ring? And she goes, I think it may be. And I think she was as proud of that uh, as I was. Uh, the look on her face was, uh, was one of those memories of your mom that you really kind of, you carry with you. That was kind of a big deal. The one thing that I think is exactly the same as today, and that is when the lady at the administration office unceremoniously 
handed me my ring in exchange for my receipt indicating I had paid. There was no prouder moment I had ever had in my life than taking that Aggie ring out of the box and putting it on my finger. The feeling that I got, I'm sure, is the very same feeling that the students have today when they get their ring. It was exhilarating. Prior to April of 2000, the Aggie ring was distributed without fanfare. The idea to change that can rightly be credited to this man. Porter S. Garner III, class of 1979. In more than 23 years as president and CEO of the Association of Former Students, he's shaken more Aggie ring adorned hands than perhaps anyone. As he prepared to take the reins of the organization, the tragic collapse of the bonfire in 1999 affected him and the Aggie network profoundly. Porter's response was a deeper dedication to bringing Aggies together. And what better symbol to gather around than the Aggie ring? I thought we needed to have a day that was more celebratory than transactional. My vision was really pretty simplistic. Engage and involve as many people as you can in one of the greatest emotional milestones in Aggie's life. I tasked a team when I took over and uh, I said I'd like to have a huge Aggie ring day as soon as possible. Within a year, we established uh, the great tradition that you know today. Congratulations on earning your Aggie ring. Students adopted the tradition immediately. So eager were they with anticipation that in the early days of Ring Day, they camped out overnight on the lawn of the Alumni Center just to claim the first available pickup slots for their rings. As the tradition has evolved, it's become much more efficient, and the scale has increased dramatically. Each Ring Day, 50,000 friends and family members accompany 7,000 ring recipients as they mark this major milestone. It really hit last semester when all my buddies were getting their rings because they all got the rings by spring. And I was like, this is epic. I'm so excited for you guys. But I want mine. I want my ring. This material piece on my finger means more than anyone could ever even imagine to me and also just to other Aggies around, around the world. Creating the Ring Day celebration requires a massive coordination effort. Just the sheer numbers that you're talking about is a logistical puzzle that we have to solve three times a year. And it requires enormous resources, an enormous number of staff and volunteers. It is all hands on deck. Whatever your job is at the association on most days, on ring day, your job is ring day. We've got volunteers who've been coming back three times a year, every ring day for, for decades. And they do it out of love. They, they love Texas A&M, they love the Aggie ring, they love Texas Aggies. Aggie ring day is probably the happiest day in Aggie land. Each and every unique Aggie ring is born at its own unique place in time. The fulcrum point upon which is balanced the legacy we inherit and the legacy we leave for future generations. The Aggie ring is a reminder of where we have been, what we have accomplished, and most important, who we are. The reason everybody gets an Aggie ring is because of the pride that we have in this school and we want everybody to know, particularly other Aggies, to know who we are and where we came from. It's a symbol of the spirit of the school and the, the dedication that we have. When you see one on someone else, you have that same feeling, you know. You know that there is someone there who shares those same values, who shares that same experience. It's a shared experience. We kind of uh, adopt people who come and have similar values and similar ideas of what it is to be uh, preparing for leadership. For me, it means being a part of a bigger community, a bigger family, and a connection that you just don't find anywhere else. Your family. You can, be, you can meet somebody on an elevator, 
you can meet him at a ball game, you see the Aggie ring, and you know you share a DNA uh, from that same experience. The Aggie ring is our family crest, and it is a family crest that is recognized wherever you go in the world. This is bigger than us, that I've been able to be a part of a, a tradition, and I'm just proud to be a part of this bigger family. It's been, it's been wonderful. But at the end of the day, whether it's our core values or the Aggie ring we wear, I think that they all look the same except for our class year. It tells us just how unique we are, but how bonded we are to each other. Because we all wear the same exact ring.